Hey everybody, the Reese Viral here, and welcome back to more Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. Okay, <laughs> hopefully this will be the final session, although I know for a fact it's going to take a while, but that, that's the hope, that's the plan, is to finish this game, so then, it, then it's done. <laughs> I know it seems like I'm rushing to have it finished, it's mostly just so that I don't have, you know, like a month break from it before I manage to finish it, because I would like to see a conclusion to the story before I forget all the details. Either way, December 20, District Court, Courtroom Number 4. What just happened? Apollo burst in and interrupted. Yeah, there we go. Mr. Justice, please explain yourself. It's very simple. There isn't much to explain. The defendant, Miss Athena Sykes, might not be innocent. Okay, at least he says might. So it's not like he's certain. He's just, you know, questioning the possibility. What are you talking about? The case from seven years ago has been settled. I'm just hoping that through recording this, I don't have any, like, voice issues. Because I've, I've, I've recorded a lot of this game. And talking constantly for... How long would it have been? Six hours? If this is like two to three hours, that would be nine hours. Put some strain on your voice, you know? I'm not talking about the past case, but about the past here. I'm talking about the present case. It's still not clear who killed Clay Terran. Oh. But Apollo, why would you... Miss Sykes, please listen quietly to what I have to say. What in the world is Apollo trying to do? Your Honor, please allow me a little of the court's time. But, this is a trial for the case from seven years ago. Miss ba Blackwell, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Just as you lost someone close to you, I lost someone close to me too. I'm sure you want to know the real truth of what happened as much as I do. <coughs> Apollo? Sure, you know I'm all for the truth. Now let's see you expose the princess's guilt. Judge, I give my permission. Continue with the trial. V very well. Is that alright with you, Prosecutor Redworth? Hmm. The prosecution has no objections. Let's hear Mr. Justice's testimony. I'll have the police investigate our police's investigation report brought immediately. Not you too, Edworth. I really hope it's because you have something up your sleeve. Very well. Your opening statement, please, Prosecutor Edworth. As you wish. Let's review the case of the murder of Clay Mr. Clay Terran. It was made clear in the previous trial that Solomon Starbuck was not his killer. Therefore, the true culprit was someone else. On that day, this culprit waited for the astronauts in Boarding Lounge 1. When the two men made their escape out of the Space Museum, the killer attacked Mr. Terran with the same type of knife that was used seven years ago. <coughs> the murderer then escaped into the Space Museum. Next, Director Yuri Cosmos switched the launch pads. After that, the culprit exited the Space Museum and escaped via boarding lounge too. Therefore, this trial must make clear who Mr. Terran's true killer was. In other words, we must discover who it was that escaped through the Space Museum that day. Thank you, Prosecutor Ridgeworth. Mr. Wright, is the defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. I'd better rearrange my evidence. Of course. <coughs> Relevant ele evidence swapped into the court record. Alright. Now then, Mr. Justice, your testimony, if you please. If in you please. Okay. Apollo Justice's accusation. I suspected Miss Sykes of the murder of Claire Terran. My growing suspicions were confirmed when this incriminating evidence presented itself. In addition, she's the only one who could have utilized the launch pad switch to escape. That is why I wish to indict Miss Sykes on the charge of murder. Wow, alright. Jeez. 
Oh no, Phoenix isn't looking too great. He's got that long face expression going on. Hmm. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Justice, you realise you are charging your own co-worker with murder, don't you? Yes, Your Honour. But that is the conclusion my investigation has led me to. But Apollo, why? How could you suspect me too? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. I don't get it. Just what did you find out over the past few days to make you think this? That's, uh, I guess we're gonna find out. Apollo Justice's accusation. Just press everything. Suspected mistakes on the of the murder of Claire Terran. What first made you suspicious of Miss Sykes? It all started when Miss Sykes and I were investigating the crime scene. When she saw the weapon that killed Mr. Terran, my bracelet reacted. She said she had never seen the knife before, but my bracelet told me otherwise. And then, every time after that, my bracelet would react when she talked about the case. Poor Apollo must have been beside himself during that investigation. I didn't know what to do or think. I couldn't even sleep. In that condition, I knew I wouldn't be able wouldn't be any good in court. So I decided to wear an eye patch, so I wouldn't be able to perceive any of her tells. So that's why Apollo was acting so strangely. Ah. It was all from suspicion. But the reason Miss Sykes unconsciously reacted to that to the knife that way is because she stabbed her mother's murderer with a with one identical to it seven years ago. But that knife was also the murder weapon that was used to kill Clay Terran. My bracelet could have also reacted to her because she knew she was his killer too. And I guess he has a point. But my bracelet wasn't the only reason I became suspicious of her. On to the next statement. My gross suspicions were confirmed when this incriminating evidence presented itself. Yeah, the lighter. That's the lighter that was found in the Space Museum with her fingerprints on it, right? But even if it seems decisive, there must be other facts we don't know about it yet. If that's so, go ahead and prove it then. Look, honestly, I don't want to believe it's true either, but... But Miss Sykes was the only one who was in the Space Museum at the time of the murder. But Mr. Justice, Miss Sykes has had absolutely no motive to kill Mr. Terran. Seven years ago, Miss Sykes lived at the Cosmos Space Center. It wouldn't be strange if she had some kind of connection to him. Besides, people sometimes kill for motives that we can't even imagine. I know you've seen plenty of cases like that in your own career, Mr. Wright. I still can't believe this. How can you actually suspect Athena, Apollo? Oh dear. In addition, she's the only one who could have utilized the launch pad switch to escape. Hmm. Isn't it possible that somebody else used that same escape route? I'm afraid not, Mr. Wright. Why not? Recall there is a security camera in Boarding Lounge 1 aimed at the launch pad door. It's the camera that captured Mr. Terran and Mrs. Starbuck. But there's also another security camera in Boarding Lounge 2. Hmm. It recorded Mr. Terran's killer, or rather, Miss Sykes, coming out of the Space Museum. A camera in Boarding Lounge 2. First I've heard of it, but it makes sense. Athena said she had snuck into the Space Museum the night before the incident, and then was overcome and passed out until around noon the next day. I was out until about noon of the next day. I didn't even know about the explosions. When I woke up, nobody was around, so I just went out into Boarding Lounge 2. That must have been when the camera captured her. And that's what made Apollo suspect her even more. But wait a minute. In that case, it most likely recorded the true culprit as well. Objection. It did not. That's a negative on that one too, Mr. Wright. 
In the footage taken after the incident, Miss Sykes is the only one who appears. What? Why? Oh dear. What? Order. Order in the cart. That can't be. But if it is, then it is incre incredibly incriminating. Wasn't it you who proved in the previous trial that the way the true culprit escaped was via the Space Museum after the pods had been switched? That pads had been switched? Hmm. A fact you previously proved turned on its ear, leaving your client high and dry. I must say, that is vintage Phoenix Wright. Oh, right, okay. Is this the final statement? Yeah, it is. That is why I wish to indict Miss Sykes on the charge of murder. Believing in your client to the end is a basic principle of good defense. Shouldn't you extend that same principle to your own co-worker? You're probably right. Maybe I'm not even fit to be a lawyer. However, I don't care. This case is special to me. Hmm. Clay was my friend. And that's why I just have to know the truth. Apollo suspected his trusted co-worker ki of killing his friend. To dispel his doubts, he investigated on his own, but that only led to more doubts. Apollo must have been really struggling with this. Well, Apollo may have doubts, but... I'll say it again. Athena Sykes isn't the murderer. Then I have only one thing to say. Evidence is everything in court. Well, Mr. Wright... Think you have con- Think you have the concrete proof to knock down my arguments? Hmm. Hmm. Your arguments have been very clear, Mr. Justice. And your facts appear to be indisputable. Well, Mr. Wright? What do you think of my theory? Hmm? It looks like not even you can deny it. Miss Sykes was the only one who used the only possible escape route. Under these circumstances, there can be no other suspect but the defendant. Unless... Hmm? You think there was an alternative escape route? Is that what you think, Mr. Wright? Is that what you think, Mr. Wright? Is that what you think, Phoenix? <laughs> was there an alternative escape route? Of course. Yes, of course, there must have been. Just don't ask me what. You're just bluffing again, aren't you? Me? Bluff? No way! <laughs> he knows me too well. It's fine, Mr. Wright. Even a bluff would suit me just... just fine. Hmm? As long as you can... Clear up this doubt inside me. Wait. So is that what this is all about? I... I want to believe in Athena. I really do. But what is faith without doubt? That's why I need to question her guilt. So that once the truth finally comes out, I can really fully trust her. So that you can... Really trust me? It seems your junior partner has just showed us what trials are truly all about. I believe you're right. We prosecutors painstakingly question every detail in pursuit of the defendant. While we lawyers believe in, our, believe in and defend our clients to the end. When both sides go all out against each other, that's when we discover the truth. Precisely. And when the battle is over, we will understand the true meaning of trust. That is exactly what trials are about. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I couldn't ignore the seeds of the seed of doubt that was growing inside me. So I decided I needed to face it head on. No matter how the uh, no matter what the truth is that's waiting ahead, I won't be afraid. That's so like Apollo. Always uber uber earnest about things like this. Mr. Justice? I vow to dispel every last bit of doubt in your heart. Good. Because I want to believe in Miss Sykes again. 
You're really hoping there was an alternative route, aren't you, Apollo? But if I use the process of elimination, there really aren't that many possibilities. The route to Cosmos was at the southern exit, leaving only the control room and the corridor to the Space Museum. Which door could the culprit have escaped through? Come on, Mr. Wright, where do you think the culprit escaped to? Hmm. I would say the Space Museum. Purely because I remember there being like a leaf on the floor that I am pretty sure as I, even as I saw it, I was like, is there a window open? It looked like a leaf had blown in. Because we was on about, well, we said like, were they stuck to someone's shoe? It was like, it's not crushed enough. So, yeah, I would say the Space Corridor. Or the Museum Corridor. They really only could have escaped to the corridor to the Space Museum. All they had to do was use the unconscious Mr. Starbucks Prince to get through the door. It appears that all you're trying to establish is Miss Sykes' guilt. If the culprit used that room, the only exit would have been in into Boarding Lounge 2. Not true. The logical conclusion of your argument is that the killer is none other than the defendant. I knew it. That's the only way it could be, huh? If the culprit escaped into the corridor that leads to the Space Museum, then I guess it's true. The only exit would have been into Boarding Lounge 2. But Miss Sykes was the only person. Captured by the Boarding Lounge 2 security camera. I investigated the crime scene thoroughly. But the only place the culprit could have escaped to was the Space Museum corridor. There weren't any other secret corridors or anything. So that leaves us with no other conclusion to draw but that Athena Sykes was the culprit. What could the answer be? Was there really no other escape, escape route? Thanks, old nerd. Appreciate it. How's it going? Well, hold on a second. What if... What if... What are we trying to establish? The leaf. Where did those mysterious leaves we saw in the corridor come from? Did they blow in? Maybe they're a clue to, to the culprit's real escape route. Hmm. I think it is possible that the culprit escaped into the Space Museum, but then came out using a route other than into Boarding Lounge 2. Oh? Launchpad 1 and the Space Museum were switched after the bombing, meaning the Space Museum corridor was moving along the rail at the time, which is exactly when an alternative escape route opened up for our culprit. Are, are you kidding me? Hmm. Judging by the intense look in your eyes, I take it you're serious. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Do tell. Where could the culprit have gone... Wait. Where could the culprit have gone from the museum corridor besides, besides Boarding Lounge 2? Uh... I'm, I'm trying to move the hand. But it, it would be, like, here, wouldn't it? Or, like, around here. I think I know where we're going with this. Pretty sure. We found something odd while investigating the museum corridor this afternoon. Namely, a few dead leaves on the floor. Considering where dead leaves come from, they point us to exactly where the culprit escaped to. Yes, I remember seeing some leaves myself. Do you mean... Yep. While the Space Museum was in motion, just beyond the corridor safety door, was an alternative place that the culprit could use to escape. In other words, the culprit's real escape route was... It's not going to tell us. The area outside the Space Center. I mean, technically it did tell us. No, are oh, you freaking insane! Do you know how impossible that would be? That corridor is level with the third floor. Even if the culprit tried to leap to the outside wall of the Space Center building, they would fall to their death. 
Ordinarily, yes. But after the bombing incident, the culprit could make use of a certain item. And what item was it exactly? Mr. Wright. Alright, this is what the culprit used to leap to the outside wall of the main building. What they used? What do we have? Oh! Uh, okay. I didn't know we had that in evidence. The ladder. It was right next to the boarding lounge. Or, oh, more so, it was placed against the boarding lounge. An emergency ladder? There was an emergency ladder in the 4th floor robotics lab. And it was used that day after the explosions to help evacu evacuate people. <laughs> Miss Blackwell herself used that ladder to escape down to the ground level. Recall that the launch pads were switched after the ladder was lowered. Jeez. The corridor would have passed by the ladder while the while the pads were being switched. And that's when the culprit literally sprang into action. Hoo-hoo. And leapt onto the ladder. What? Who who would have imagined? When it is an alternate escape route, we've opened up that possibility. Order. Order in the court. Well, an alternative route, escape route seems to have emerged. Which means someone other than Miss Sykes could have been the culprit, right? Making things up on the fly in an attempt to sway the court again, huh? are we, Mr. Wright? Your theory has so many holes, it puts Swiss cheese to shame. Alright then. Name one. I have here detailed information about the Space Center. According to this, the distance between the museum corridor and the main building during movement is... Oh, a full 20 feet. 20 feet. You're pulling my leg, right? In addition, the corridor is three floors from the ground, or roughly 50 feet. What's more, the culprit would be leaping to a precarious place. An unstable ladder. Human beings feel fear in dangerous situations. It's a basic survival instinct. Also, they've definitely highlighted fear as like a hint. Which is obvious what we need to present next. <clears throat> because of that. An ordinary person would certainly hesitate before jumping. Or even freeze in fear and not jump at all. True, but we're not dealing with an ordinary person. But the culprit had just murdered someone. They weren't in an ordinary state of mind. Or more so, they weren't an ordinary person. Nevertheless, why would they have taken that kind of risk? They could have waited for the switch to be... to be complete and escaped to Bodding Lounge too. Because there was a security camera in Bodding Lounge too. The culprit knew they would be recorded if they left the Space Museum that way. In that case, the culprit could have hidden in the museum until things settled down. And then blended in with the other people after the museum was opened. That's a good point. But you claim that despite all this, the culprit took a 20-foot death-defying leap. And all in the brief moment, the corridor and ladder passed, passed by each other. That's also a good point. They would have needed a running start while the corridor was moving to make that jump. If their timing was off or if they couldn't jump far enough, it would have been instant death. What kind of person would attempt something like that? Stop bringing up good points, Edgeworth. <laughs> this true culprit of yours is nothing but a figment of your imagination. Why do you always have to point out every flaw? That's the prosecutor's job. To poke holes in your theories. Mr. Edgeworth's right. That does sound pretty insane. The culprit would have to be someone who feels no fear, like a stuntman. And there it is. But everyone feels fair on some level. Wait, right? That's it! Wait a minute. Yes, we have the psych profile. I've got it this time. I can prove that there is someone who could have used this alternate escape route. Oh, can you now? 
This proves the possibility of a person who could have used this alternate escape route. Or alter uh, alternative. Where's the psych profile? Oh, page two. Whoops. The Phantom's psych profile. The subject's emotions rarely flu fluctuate and he doesn't experience feelings like normal people do. Ta-da! What's that, Mr. Wright? This is a certain person's very interesting psych profile. The subject doesn't experience feelings like normal people do. In other words, this person doesn't feel happiness, sadness, or fear. Doesn't feel fear. Uh, r right. You can't be serious. Without the constraint of fear. He could easily do what an ordinary person wouldn't dare. Just as you or I could do a broad jump on the ground, without the slightest fear. This subject could make a 20 foot leap, 50 feet up in the air. He could choose this extreme way of escaping without hesitation. So you're saying that a person without fear... The alternative route would be quicker and eliminate the chance they'd be spotted. Did I read that right? Ah, oh, that too, a person without fear. The alternative route would be quicker and eliminate the chance that they'd be spotted. Yep. That's definitely pretty extreme, Mr. Wright. But was there such a person there at the scene? Yes. The Phantom. That mysterious, shadowy figure who keeps popping up. Oh dear. The Phantom. Again? I knew the Phantom was there behind the scenes of the Space Center bombing. But I wasn't sure if he was connected to the murder of Clay Terran as well. However, now it's all clear. The Phantom is the one who not only bombed the Space Center, but also killed Mr. Terran. What? Oh man, things are getting interesting. What the hell is this music? I just started to hear, like, guitar. So order in the car. Order, I say. M Mr. Wright, please continue. There were just too many similarities between this case and the one from seven years ago. But why, you may ask? It can only be because both incidents were the work of the same phantom. So then, this phantom is the only one who killed Clay, or is the one who killed Clay. But who is he? This phantom has been haunting this case, pulling the strings in the background. Who could this unidentified international spy be? Right, this escape route must have been part of the Phantom's plan from the start. As was tricking Director Cosmos into switching the launch pads. The bomb on the second floor was meant to make the elevator start uh, and stairs unusable. That's why he gave advance warning and planted the bombs the way he did. Yes, I think you're right. But it doesn't explain this one last thing. So I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective leading the evacuation told me to. But it was such a pain. Why couldn't they have used the ladders in the other rooms? The robotics lab wasn't the only room with an emergency ladder. But he couldn't have made that leap unless he was certain which one it would be. So you mean... The Phantom must be someone who knew that particular ladder was going to be used. Oh. Oh. Wait. That's right. Hmm. Who could it be? How obvious are they going to make it? Wait a minute. Very obvious. So I lowered my emergency ladder, like the detective leading the evacuation told me to. So basically, Fulbright. Really? That seems unlikely. Hmm. <laughs> Then again, Fulbright has been acting rather strange for this, like, for the past two cases, technically. He was, like, overly helpful. He didn't know which side was actually justice. 
It was, yeah. It could be. I don't know. It just seems kind of like a shot in the dark. Miss Blackwell lowered the ladder after being told by the detective leading the... <laughs> what? There we go. We know who it is. Or we think we do. You've got to be kidding me. Did you figure it out right? Do you know who the Phantom is? Yes, I do. H who is it? Who killed Clay? What? Our mystery, mystery spy, known as the Phantom, is none other than... Really? Fulbright, that's... What? Oh, I'm confused. <laughs> After the explosions, a member of the staff crossed paths with a certain dis uh, with a certain detective. <coughs> I was on duty on the fourth floor. It was quite the madhouse, I tell you. <laughs>